Bangga Samida Om Shanti Peace to you Peace to me Hello and welcome to another video Today I'd like to talk about humans Why we're trying to rule nature Rather than obey it or, or live by it I should say Really This is really becoming very very important because we, you and I, we're nature. We are nature. We're part of the natural world, the symbiotic relationship with energy. If you come to a more physical level, our relationship with trees is very symbiotic because they're breathing out carbon dioxide. We're breathing, they're breathing out oxygen, breathing in carbon dioxide. We're breathing out carbon dioxide and breathing in oxygen. So it's all interrelated on many many different levels so what is this who's defying nature are we becoming more materialistic or more spiritual that's a very big question are we more are you more materialistic or more spiritual there's nothing wrong with having good things there's nothing wrong with buying things that you need of good quality to keep consuming and consuming and consuming rubbish that you don't need that you end up throwing away and throwing away not a good scene and that, and that is really materialism do you want a bigger car just because you want a bigger car a bigger house because you just want a bigger house that's very materialistic that's really not being to your, your, your true self your natural self which is to be you're a human being have we brought this on ourselves where we, where we face today with, with the pollution and the terrible things that are happening around the world? And I don't really buy the climate change religion, as it were, with carbon dioxide. There's many good arguments and good, good scientists who are against that, who are talking out against it as well now, which is really good. But have we brought this upon ourselves? Were our ancestors really, did they ever, did they leave us with a planet that was in such a state that it was virtually uninhabitable in places? No, no, they didn't. No, if you go back, they did uh, ice, they do ice, um, check the ice, go back 250,000 years, they've gone down. And they found that there's been more carbon dioxide on the planet than there has been now. And they didn't have all these cars and all this other stuff that's pumping out carbon dioxide. There are other gases that are, I think are far more harmful that we're releasing into the atmosphere, plus the pollution and the plastics. That is where the issues are, not that, and that's unnatural. Carbon dioxide is a natural gas and it, it gets absorbed very quickly by plants. If you, you understand photosynthesis and how that actually works and where the building blocks of life are, it's actually in carbon. We're carbon based beings. But did our ancestors, did they leave the planet in a reasonable condition? If you go back to the early Egyptian civilization down in the Indus Valley on that area, Mesopotamia, nothing. There's no, no instances of any kind of pollution there whatsoever. And it wasn't because they were primitive either, because they had batteries. They, it looks like they really did understand about electricity and energy and they built structures that we can't even build today. So they were not primitive, not primitive at all. They were very advanced civilizations, very spiritual as well, very non-materialistic. They were understanding that this life to be natural is for you to grow into the best human being that you possibly can be. Can you imagine an oak tree, a magnificent oak tree suddenly at half of its size suddenly realized well oh, I fancy just doing this for the rest of my life I'm gonna stay here Can you imagine it doing that so you have all these little oak trees that really didn't form any other oak trees because they weren't seeding or they weren't growing or they weren't spreading their wisdom it, it doesn't happen in nature but with us for us to actually get to our full potential there's many many different reasons for that and that is us really defying nature as human beings our natural state what we thrive for we thrive for new we, we, we desire new experiences we, we desire 
to get out there and express ourselves. We desire all of this and it's all been turned around by the meme that we live in. We're born into something and it's all twisted. It gets twisted like the entertainment industry, especially the music industry, is a very, very good example of that. Of artists now not wanting to be artists, they just want to be famous. They just want the money, they want the, the fame, they want people to look at them in adoration and go, oh, look at you, you're so brilliant. Why? <laughs> Why do you want that? And they're finding that very hollow and shallow existence. And it is, it is. Once you get to that position, you're still going to be the same inside. You're still going to have that that wanting and, and trying to find what it is you're supposed to be doing. So our, our ancestors didn't leave this to us. So are we doing this to ourselves? Or is it a force that's doing this to us? That's another very interesting question. It's unbelievable what's happening today, how we're breaking away from nature. Just a few examples is weather, weather modification. Now, a lot of people find that a very hot topic and very difficult to understand. But they've been modifying the weather since the 1950s. When, when the American Air Force realized that they could create hurricanes by dry, uh, flying two jets in a certain manner, they'll create a hurricane. And now, well, you, they've got declassified documents on Operation Popeye, which was in the Vietnam War, showing that they were manipulating the, the, the weather um, by causing torrential rain up the north of Vietnam to, so the Viet Cong could, couldn't move their battle troops. It was a massive experiment and then they flooded areas of it with Agent Orange, which is now glyphosate today. That is defying nature. That is not living a natural life. And yet, the people who have done this, they seem to just get away with it scot-free, which I find incredible. Incredible, absolutely incredible. So we're, we're defying nature in that respect. But in today's world, there's also the argument about chemtrails, contrails, what are they? What's going on with that? Just go to, weather, I think it's weathermodification.com, weathermodification.com and look at the company. There's a company doing this that's actually modifying weather in certain countries across the world. And there's quite a few. And I imagine Britain's doing its own weather modification. But in America, weathermodification.com actually shows you the areas that they're doing weather modification. It's, it's quite astounding. And people say, oh, oh, they can't be doing that. Of course they are. They, they, as I say, in the 1950s, they learned how to modify the weather. And China, China has actually bragged that they've had, they, they created the snow. The Chinese government created the snow in Beijing twice. They bragged in the papers twice, bragged. So whatever's going on with the weather is incredible. There's some amazing research going on, showing this and highlighting this and still people won't believe it because they're attached to their ego. Oh, can't be true. Can't be true, but I don't know about that. It wasn't on the BBC. What's the matter with you? Are you crazy? Look and do your own research. There's amazing, amazing people who are doing wonderful things on this planet and exposing this craziness that we're doing. We're modifying the weather now on this planet. Not us, human beings, but above us. And we're not being told about it or not they're not being very honest about it at all there's aluminium being found now on the top of the himalayas aluminium aluminium is not a natural metal it's a man-made metal so that is again us human beings moving away from the natural environment the natural environment is so important for us to be with yourself to take the journey inside which most people really can't do at the moment and I must admit I've, I've struggled with it over the last six or seven years and finding it really fruitful since starting to take that journey to actually start to look inside of myself who am I what am I doing here why am I here what's my purpose big questions and that's natural that's a natural state of affairs not going out and out and out looking for stimulation so it, it, that's that journey inside is really important but what are they doing with, with the weather? What are they doing with the GMOs, the genetically modified organisms? They're not natural also. 
They're not natural. And they, they, the seeds that come from genetically modified organisms go into other seeds and other fields and they start to damage the organic crops which are actually very good for us, natural. You, you pick the food out of the ground and you put it in your mouth. That's the best way of doing it. But obviously we have cooking processes and cleaning processes and stuff like that. But it's not natural. It's not natural. And then people put their hands up and say, why are we, human beings, the most sickest species on the planet? Why? <laughs> Why? Because we're moving away from an unnatural life. We're trying to rule nature when we should really be either ruled by it or living by it, living alongside it, being, living a natural life. Our ancestors had a far more simple life. Far more simple life doesn't have to be complicated doesn't have to have all this high tech not that I'm a lover I do love technology I'm using it now there it is <laughs> it's us connecting with ourselves scientists are saying now that 95% of our brain power is going out of the body and they're saying 95% of our brain power actually should be coming into the body we should be focusing on ourselves more because this is a very complicated machine. It's the most complicated piece of equipment on the planet. Yours, the same. Your body is the same. The most complicated piece of equipment on the planet. And it takes some looking after. Believe me, especially as you start to age, it takes a lot more looking after. And therefore, once you start to look after this body and focus on your inside and the brain power starts to come back in, you see miracles happening in your life. It starts to change completely. So my plea here, really, call for action, is for you to start to connect with yourself and also connect with nature more. There's no harm done like there is today on the planet. Never seen it for 25, 250,000 years. And you look at the Vedas and, and, and the, uh, the Gnostic teachings, everything like that, We've had some amazing things happening on this planet. We've even had wars, it looks like, between the good and the bad, the classic good-bad battles that have been going on, and that's happening today as well. And that battle is going inside of you as well. It's inside of you, and it's up to you. Like they say, the Native American Indian proverb, of the, the good wolf and the bad wolf, is up to you which wolf you feed. And nature, with the greenery and all the beauty, will feed you the right food to feed the right wolf. It's up to you. There's no, there's no, no other, you, you, you have that choice. And that basically, once you make the, the right choice, every moment of your life, you become enlightened. Must I? <laughs> so go out there, be more natural, enjoy yourself, and enjoy other people because they're natural too. They're part of your natural surroundings. I hope you enjoyed this, uh, enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Ring the bell. Ding! And I'll see you in the next video. Sarang Hamida.